this is how we're gonna fix this. We got ourselves a rebuild kit from Richmond. There you go, it's part number. It comes with shims, new seals, pinion bearings, side carrier bearings, gasket maker. Um, it's got your little, your pattern making grease in there. It's got uh, new ring gear bolts in it. So everything you need there. We also got ourselves uh, some seals and wheel bearings. There's a part number actually. There's your part number from Summit. We are going with the Eaton Posi unit and we're upgrading our axles from the 28 spline to 31 spline since we're doing a five lug conversion already on it. And put a new set of gears in it. Reason being, you see here, missing some teeth. So, new set of gears from Ford. These are 373s, which is what was in it, but just replacing them uh, based off of the chip tooth on there. There you go, part number on that. So we got our rear end all cleaned up and painted here and all we got to do is put this, that, and that in there and get it all set up. So here we go. Alright guys, we got to get this pinion bearing off the pinion, it's the inner bearing. And uh, we need to do that because, <coughs> excuse me, there's a, uh, there's a shim back here and we need to know what size shim that is so when we go to put our new one together we uh we know have a good starting point generally i use the original one um so anyhow let's get this out of here Him. So let's go get that measured up, see what it is. Alright, we knocked our outer and inner race out. Um one thing you want to check is down here sometimes you'll get a little casting that's actually raised up, especially from when you're you're knocking the punch, you know, knocking this uh yeah knocking this race out towards you here. Um, what you want to do is go back with your punch and kind of peen down those raised areas. You don't want that race to be sitting in here uh, cocked or, you know, out of square to the casting here. So, I don't know if you can see it there or not, but it is a little raised up. So that's what we'll do. We'll just go in here, tap it down. You'll see it, you know, you'll get it flat there. And then uh, that should be good to go. Let me clean this out. We gotta clean our axle tubes out there. Make sure you get all the dirt and debris out of them. Cause all that stuff will do. Just travel right back in your rear end. You don't want that. Oh. To get these axle bearings out, you're going to need some tools. You can pick these up at Harbor Freight. Pretty inexpensive. That's what they look like. That's how they work. Just like that. You're also going to need a slide hammer. Now we got to clean all that junk out of there. 
Doing all right. Squeaky clean in there now. So another thing that you want to do is you want to make sure blow this thing out with compressed air really well. And all of your bolt holes, you want to make sure are cleaned out because you can't compress fluid and you can't compress dirt when it's down in there. So when you torque these things up, and I even torque the back cover bolt, but when you torque them, you'll either get an improper torque reading out of it or worst case scenario, you crack the housing. When you're dri driving that bolt down in there and back at the threads, if there's fluid or dirt in there, it's trying to compress it and it's gotta go somewhere. So, you know, don't put a window in there. So, remember the chipped tooth here on this pinion? Right there, that one. Well, initially, I couldn't find anything in the rear end. So, I thought maybe they were like a used set that somebody put in there. I was wrong, however, because all the way at that end, sitting right in there, it's dark, but right about here, behind that wheel bearing, I found this little guy. That is our tooth. So, I guess I'll put that under my pillow. Maybe I'll find a quarter under there in the morning. All right, what we're gonna do here is file down the surface just to remove any burrs or anything that might be left back uh, behind from the machining process here on the carrier. And we're also going to do it to the back side of the ring gear. Um, just because you want this to be a super flat s surface. So when that ring gear sits on here, that it's not cocked to one side or anything like that. So a little fine file. We'll just go around it like so a couple of times. Make sure to knock off any high spot spurs or anything like that. Good practice.
16 to 28. Ring gear, that's torque. Carrier, bolt, torque, and then backlash. So we were at 20 inch pounds on our preload. pound an inch pound dial torque wrench so what this does is you turn it you know and it's got a, a follower needle like a memory needle so wherever your maximum torque was that'll stay there and you have to use one of these you cannot use a uh, like a click style torque wrench it doesn't work you can maybe try to get away with the beam style wrench but I wouldn't recommend it. I don't think you're gonna get an accurate reading. So I bought this off of Amazon for like 168 bucks. But you need it to do this. You cannot do this without it. But when you go to do it sometimes initially to get it started you're gonna get a really high reading. So what I always like to do is zero out my gauge Support the handle, grab the socket, start turning it, and then transfer to the handle so that you kind of get it going first. Give yourself a couple of rotations and then check. And as you can see, we're right about 19 ish, 19 and a half, 20 inch pounds. So we're right in the middle of our spec. We are good here. Flip it over and we'll start putting the carrier in. for 8 to 12 here on the backlash and right now we are sitting right about 13 and a half 14 ish depending where you measure 14 so I'd like to hit 10 
So we're gonna have to move the ring gear that way, which means take shims out of here and add shims there. One eternity later. Guys, final assembly. We got <clears throat> pinions all done. That's in. New seal, new nut, new crush sleeve, new inner and outer bearings and races. We have 20 inch pounds on the bearing preload in the front. Out back here, we've got eight and a half on our backlash. So we are a little bit on the tight side, but we are in spec. So once these gears run in and they get some break in time and a wear pattern on them, we should be sitting happy right around nine, nine and a half on our backlash. Bearing caps, 100 foot pounds. When you're putting these things together, cleanliness is key. Um, just like with anything, engine, transmission, you know, the whole deal. I'm going to rerun the pattern here and just verify that we are in good shape. But we had a decent pattern before final assembly, so hopefully it all is good. So that's what I'm going to do right now. I just got to get... I have no idea where to put it. I'll find the gear marking compound. We'll run another pattern on this and we should be good to go. But, yep, there you go. Spec is 8 to 12. And we are at 8.5. So, we're tight, but we're in. There's our pattern. We've got a nice wide pattern on our tooth there. So, and then on the coast side, it's not bad. We're going to give her a shot. Should be good to go. Should be a good, quiet, solid rear. The 31 spline axles in it. So now all we gotta do is get it buttoned up, put the cover on it, jam it in under the car. Um, still gotta get our, our axle for it yet, but they're gonna come with the uh, the five lug disc brake conversion, so. Rear end is ready to be buttoned up. We'll jam it under the car and be doing burnouts in no time, so. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. Um, stay tuned to the channel. We've got plenty going on. So uh, hit that bell. That way you can stay up to date on all of our projects here. And uh, I'll catch you next time. See ya.